thank you all. So let me start the introductions from the panelists closest to me, Sakshi Joshi. Uh, many of you are already familiar with her work. If not all of you, uh, she runs her own YouTube channel. She's one of the uh, many young, brave, uh, and informed breed of journalists who is doing what they do without institutional support uh, on their own. Uh, one man or two man or three man or woman, sorry. One person, two person or three person armies. Uh, uh, and uh, I have been watching her, her show regularly. And in fact, we just had a chat and I was wondering if we could collaborate in some way because that is the power of people, power of one. So welcome, Sakshi. Thank you so much, Abhinandan. Thanks for such a nice introduction. <laughs> Even I didn't know about you, know so much about myself. <laughs> right. Um, then uh, Sharu Kalam is a lawyer who practices in the Supreme Court. Uh, she is interested in, in fact, it has been given to me specifically, in constitutionality and criminal law and its intersection with political power, identity, and class. I thought I should uh, specifically quote that because that is a specific intersection uh, and I hope we can get a lot from uh, her because she is the only legal mind on stage. The rest of us are just flirting with danger once in a while. We're on the receiving end. Yes. And uh, Akash Banerjee, of course, is has had a very wonderfully accomplished career. He has done a lot of things. Uh, he was an anchor uh, back when he was young, not that to say he's still not young, but I remember watching him as an anchor. Uh, after that, he was an executive, a senior executive in a radio station. Uh, so then he wasn't on camera or on air, but he was strategizing and doing whatever else, I guess, uh, senior executives do. After which he quit with the Times Group actually. Uh, and he's uh, an anchor with the India Today group. So he has actually really played the field as far as media is concerned. And now he has set up a spectacularly successful channel of his own called Desh Bhakt. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with his satire and his work. It is really amazing. Uh, and uh, like us, I'm sure he has many uh, cases waiting. So uh, let me start with uh, you, Shah Rukh. Um, we have, what I have observed from uh, the kind of uh, cases that we get or the legal notices we get and also um, our conversations with lawyers and the kind of proceedings that happen in court. Things like fair use, what is fair use, what is commentary which is okay even if it's not uh, in, in the confines of decent language. All these are settled matters when you see uh, many such uh, shows uh, and, and conversations in the West. But here I find uh, right across, you know, from lawyers to jurists to judges, it is something that is still new. I mean, for example, we have been asked that, uh, why are you commenting on the news? Uh, comment on politics. But news is such an important institution by itself that that also needs commentary. But it is a very new thing. And at the same time, platforms like YouTube or Twitter and stuff. I still haven't found any reasonable, consistent logic to what they take down and what they don't. Uh, so do they prevail? Uh, does the law prevail? Uh, or are both they find, or are both finding their way? Is this settled matter yet? Or do we have many such conversations to go before we really get to what the settled matter is? Well, I, have an, I have a thought that's not a fully formed thought yet, but, but let me use it as a provocation. I've been thinking about this and when you think about the idea of Battamizi and how we understand Battamizi here, it's not so much the content of the speech. It's about who's speaking and who are they speaking to. Uh, I went to an old fashioned school in, in Patna, it was a convent, and the gravest sin there was back answering. If you back answered the teacher, that, that was what was conceived as, as, as causing disruption or rupture. And if you think about it, it's always the domestic worker who's Batamese. It's always the security guard who's Batamese. It's always the street vendor who's Batamese. And this idea flows also to, into government, into the, into the idea of the state. The lowest functionary of the state always speaks in, in a commanding voice to the citizen. The shoving, cursing policeman is not Batamese. But when you stop him, when you say Delhi police Murdabad, that's apparently when, when the problem arises. And I think that that notion of Battamizi is, is also what defines the idea of offensive speech. 
or ill-mannered speech. And the idea of Batamizi is also now expanding to protect political power and social power and also economic power. And also, also ideas that political power supports. So anything that political power supports, and if you're attacking that idea, that I think is considered Batamizi or offensive. And more and more, according to me, law is mirroring this hierarchy in our social culture. Law is borrowing directly from it. So most prosecutions, according to me, happen when you challenge established social political power or ideas that, that they support. So there is a consistent logic, according to me. Uh, and, and that logic is this, this thread of Batamizi that is borrowing from our underlying social hierarchies. Right, that's interesting. It is, um, it is very status driven, depending on who says what, according to the punishment comes. But speaking of Batamizi, Akash, uh, <laughs> you will be in a lot of trouble. It depends on who the satirist is. Uh, our whole government is a satire, but they're speaking down, so yes. that that doesn't seem <laughs> they're safe. So uh, you know, I, when uh, you know when I had started writing this show called uh, The Great Indian Tamasha, Gustakhi Maaf with these puppets on NDTV, uh, I don't know if you remember, but it was a very well thought out uh, strategy that uh, we will start off with the Gulf War was on at the time, so the first puppets actually that were made were of Sonia Gandhi and Atal Bihari Vajpayee. But they never made it on air till, I mean, they didn't make it on air till about a year later. We started off with Saddam Hussein, Tony Blair, and George Bush, and Osama bin Laden. Because Osama was missing, we didn't know where he was, Tora Bora. So for about, if I remember, three months, we just, I had to write a gag three times a week with these four characters. Like, you run out of jokes. I was like, can we introduce Atal Ji and Sonia Ji? So let's just wait. Let's see how people react. Let's see, you know, not that there's any law against making fun of Sonia Gandhi or Atal Bihari Vajpayee, but that is, let's make fun of Bush, Trump, all the, not Trump wasn't there, Bush, Blair, Osama and Saddam. Once people get used to it, then we'll introduce one more. And even then, Sonia and Atal weren't the ones who were introduced. Uh, Madanal Khurana, Sheila Dikshit, Oma Bharti, Digvijay Singh, and Ashok Gehlot and uh, Vasundra Raje. Yeah, so I don't know if you remember how that show evolved. So we kept pushing the line of who we can make fun of and exactly what you said. You know, let's make fun of Madhalal Quran and Sheila Dikshit. We'll get to Atal and Sonia later. So uh, when you are writing or performing or commenting, how much of real law do you read or consult? And how much is it? So a lot of uh, luck, I think that's at play. Uh, thanks, of course, guys, uh, for making it here, because I think the grouse that most of the people who are even daring to speak out at this point of time is who cares. So the fact that you care, I mean, really means a lot. So thanks for making it here. So yeah, claps to you guys. Um, the irony is that you reserved the best character till the very end, because Gustaki Maaf is known literally for Vajpayee's pauses that were given there. So that's the irony with satire is that the best content would hardly make it uh, on air. Today, we all know that you wouldn't even have that show on air if you tried it today. With the same permutations, combinations, just change the government, you wouldn't have it there. You would, but you just wouldn't have Mr. Modi and Amit Shah's putla. You'd have everybody else's. <laughs> You're being optimistic. Even without that, I have my doubts because a phone call would come and pressures would be mounted. Um, in India today, it's an irony that one has to think 10 times before trying to do satire. I always say this is that you go to a politician and say, Tu corrupt hai. Uh, you go to a politician and say, you are inefficient. He'll still tolerate you. you. Try make fun of him, mimic him, poke fun at him. That's taken as a personal affront. So the whole concept of satire or political mockery doesn't exist in this country. Um, a lot of people have come and said, Are, but you said you started off with the whole idea of the late night American television, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Stephen Colbert and all. I said, Deekho, ek hai. Uh, one is one hundredth of that. But even if we try to do something like Jimmy, I mean, Gustagi Maaf was really high caliber satire. But if you try to do a late night American, uh, American style show, you will be in jail the very next day. So what we are limited to is very crass, cheap, basic level satire. Ek joke idhar mar diya, ek punch udhar mar diya. Try too much and you will 
uh, face the stick. And th that really is the problem because you're saying that minus two, it would have been allowed how I see it. And we can discuss this uh, going after television, after print. It's basically independent YouTubers who will be next on the chopping block. And as ma'am said, Sataris would be a very easy game. Remember, Zubair got into legal trouble not because of what he had posted or the immediacy of what he had done. He got into trouble for a satirical tweet which he had made three years ago of a 30-year-old movie. It's very, very easy to trap anybody as far as satire goes because it can go either way. So it all depends on who wants to, you know, take your case on that particular day. So people ask me, what's your business plan? It's basically staying out of jail as long as possible. But, but do you uh, actually see what are the kind of cases that have been um, ruled in a certain way you know, when you put out stuff? Does that at all cross your mind? Do you have a lawyer you consult when you are doubtful about something? Uh, or is it just, you know, let me test the water and see what happens. So I think one thing that has kept me safe is, as you said, the television background. I think that that 10 years of television background at least gives you a basic understanding is what is hurting religious sentiment in, in a sensical way, uh, in, a, in a logical way, what is a, a, a clear case of defamation, uh, what is it when you're quoting sources. So that would give you some buffer. But what cases like Zubair clearly show is that today there is no clear line. I, I, I say it, but you tell us, no, don't mention this person, don't do this, this is the red line, you tell us. Have uh, Article 56, 56 points, you don't mention these 56 things. I'm still willing to exist. But in today's day and age, you never know what is going to go against you, which tweet is going to be used or weaponized against you. That's that's the blunt reality. But having said that, if, if there is, and that's where you guys come in, and that's why I was complimenting you guys. Honestly, the government doesn't want to do anything which will antagonize a large section of people. They will only go ahead and do this if people say, ah, acha hua. I mean, I get birthday wishes saying, stay out of jail this year. Uh, people come and say, uh, not great satire, very brave. I don't think that's a compliment. I didn't to satire. So what is this whole business of being brave? So that's the irony. Uh, that's where we are existing at this point of time. I just want to add that you asked that question as if lawyers know what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> Law is pretty much satire too in this day and age. So Sakshi, um, you know, your uh, experiences as a standalone YouTuber um, and as opposed to, you know, if one has institutional backing, do you approach your journalism differently? Uh, you haven't got any takedown notices yet, you know, like like uh, we have, we got, I think, 51, but now they're reinstated. Uh, how do you measure what you can and cannot say? Because you are very outspoken on Twitter, I have noticed that. Uh, but do you have different rules on this is what I can say on Twitter and this is what I will say on this? Uh, do you consciously not use any footage that you think may take, you know, get you on a takedown notice because you don't have an institution that you've set up, you know, he still has a team and he's growing, but you've just yeah. stand alone. So how do you approach your content? You're right, uh, Abhinandan, uh, when, you know, it comes to Twitter. So many of us, you know, all those independent YouTubers, YouTube journalists, you can call us, because I think that's a different kind of genre that we've taken up. So we always think twice before tweeting our videos. So, and we also try to scrutinize that whether this particular video that I've just created, made, should I be tweeting it? And I've seen that most of the people are actually refraining from tweeting their work that they are uploading on YouTube and Facebook. So this thing that you just mentioned, yes, we have started doing that because uh, we all know that this government has big problem with people who speak on Twitter. Twitter is something, you know, I don't know because, you know, that is the platform that they grew from and uh, that is the platform that they, uh, that helped them uh, create that misinformation environment and however, you know, everybody else got to know about Twitter and how to react on Twitter, what Twitter is very late. And by the time we all started understanding that what Twitter means for this government, this government just started putting all kind of restrictions and you know, they've started acting against those people. So yes, on a lighter note also, but it's quite serious that, uh, you know, because all of us keep discussing so many stories with each other. If there's a particular thing that, are you doing it? Are you doing it? Yes, it does come to us. But then also we you know think about it that, yes, this is what we are here for. 
if we have created a parallel media, we just can't keep thinking that, you know, this particular thing we're not supposed to do. So we are supposed to do it. But how we are supposed to do it? We have to be very careful. You know, these news channels, which you call Godi Media today, they don't think twice before airing anything because they know they can get away with it. Right now, just while coming here, I have tweeted a complete thread on how Times Now has just, you know, uh, used a particular uh, walkthrough of Tiljala, uh, you know, uh, a car was torched on 27th March. And they used that clip along with that Havra Ramnavmi incident on the 31st of March. They played that video, quietly deleted the tweet, but it still did go on air. And where is the apology then? Where is the clarification? Times now is a big group. So I did tag Vineet Jain about it, you know, because this a thing like this does spread communalism. But these people can get away with even an apology only if called out. People like us have to think, I don't know how many times. We are so afraid in that sense that we just keep thinking. And up to aisa ho gaya ki after Zubair incident, I don't think that all of us are afraid anymore because we are sure that kabhi na kabhi to hone wala hai. So what we are doing is that everybody is just trying to find out what are our weaknesses of staying in a jail. If we have a problem with someone, we think that we can keep our attention to how we can live without AC. If we have a problem with someone, we can't sleep on the ground, so we can practice that too. So yes, I'm telling you, literally these are the conversations happening between us. Because now I don't think that we are afraid anymore. We've just actually, we're just waiting for that day. Just like, you know, Akash said that everyone's just telling him that, you know, just stay out of jail this birthday. This is what is happening with us. Because the thing is that we don't want to uh, go away from our path because this is the ladai, you know, you know, this is the ladai that the journalism used to be this and it has to be this. Agar humko agar change hi karna tha apne aapko, so we would have, you know, very easily become a part of that Godi media. I won't have to, you know, leave my job. I won't have to uh, even think of, you know, uh, coming uh, or, you know, going independent and I would have just, you know, thought of applying somewhere else. When I left my channel, everyone tells me that News 24 to phir bhi theek hai and all that. It's not about what theek hai. It's about what I can't do, even staying there, right? So there are a few stories which I don't think that I'll be able to do anywhere if I'm working in any news channel or even, you know, print media. Right now, what I am doing, I know that my show is this, I get a particular bite, milti hai, I can just go unedited. Nobody's going to tell me that you have to do a show for 20 minutes. I can do 40 minutes. I'm my own boss. I know that what people are seeing, I have to show all the bites. I can do it, you know, there is no pressure on me. Whatever I can see, I can show you. I can show you an unedited. So this is the kind of change that we have tried to bring in. And I think this is what is also affecting the mainstream media. Another thing that, you know, because this topic was taken from the IT rules and everything, I just wanted to tell you all one thing that we have, I mean, at least me and I know a few more other independent journalists, we have closed all our messenger boxes and everything. Because what we get is not news, but only abuse. I have a lot of research now, because the thing is that I generally block them. So in that, the IT rules, your criteria is that uh, people should complain to you, and you have to answer it within 24 hours. And within 15 days, you'll have to tell us that you know what you have done with that complaint. So what do I do with a complaint like this? because this is not a complaint. Uh, generally, people uh, approach me for a particular news story and somebody writes to me, brother, fucker, aurat, kyun jhoot phela rahi hai? I like the way he's trying to abuse me while respecting my sister and mother, brother, fucker. <laughs> but, but ab isko mein kya jawab dungi? You just tell me. According to those rules, I'm supposed to respond. No, there are no facts in this. Okay, so if you think that I'm phelawing jhoot, tell me the facts, no. Tell me. Aise facts wala koi mail hi nahi aata hai. So what do I respond to these people? Am I supposed to block them or am I supposed to respond to them and utaro their arti? So I don't understand about these old, you know, these rules. Where are they coming from and they're not listening to us. They've just got, uh, you know, they've just told us, that, okay, these are the rules, you have to follow it. How do I follow it? While pretending there was a consultative process. Yeah, but, uh, while pretending. Yeah. There was no. I'll just add to this so that you guys also know what one is dealing with as far as uh, independent channels are concerned. So I hope that broadly we would agree in this room is that there are various ways that a government can get across to a television channel and a newspaper. Uh, broadsheet ka tax laga do, gherav kar do, ads dena band kar do. It, man, a lot of people end up very surprised when they get to know that 33-40% of ad revenues of a newspaper usually comes from the government. 
and then you expect these guys to question the government. Mm -hmm. The licensing procedures for a news channel are so complicated that nobody wants to take on the government. Ask yourself, when was the last time you saw or read a story in mainstream media that really shook the government? How many years ago would that be? So that's there. Digital was emerging as this new child on the block. It was soaring. People who did not like the establishment. Uh, I, I left and went to radio altogether. I had quit journalism only. Uh, then I came back and did this whole uh, satire business. But look at the problems we are facing at this point of time. On one hand, you have the government that is realizing how digital is becoming big. And that's why ma'am is going to have a lot more cases in the coming days if she wants to take these cases. I, I would like to take your number. <laughs> government says national security, I can pull down your story. No questions asked, no justification given, not even informing us. So tomorrow I do a story on Galvan. The government can just say that this is national, uh, uh, national security and we are pulling down the story. Or pull, it, pull down the channel also. There is not much you can do. But that's the best case scenario. Using public order as an example or spreading communal disharmony, a case can be filed. So that's as easy as it gets. And this is the new uh, digital media uh, bill that is coming in. Bangladesh already has Digital Security Act, which is almost similar. And that's how they are doing this chilling effect. So that's the Sarkari part of it. We are dealing with that. We are aware of that. Then comes the takedown. Abhinandan is playing it down. He got 51 takedown notices from one TV channel because, well, they were like, yaar, to pol khul rahi hai. 51 videos being taken off. And the channel obviously going into hibernation for what? Two months. Because yeah. about two months. Not, won the case. Yeah. Yeah. So thankfully, they had the gumption. They had the resources to go to the police, uh, to the courts uh, to, to reverse that. I did an episode, I'll give you real life examples, did an episode on uh, the protests that are happening in Iran. The video was demonetized, it was age restricted. Why? There was no violent shot, but the topic was sensitive, so we age restricted it. Did an episode on floods in Pakistan, age restricted. Now what's the problem there? The problem is, as so, so you said, I can uncensored. Dikha sakti hu. Unfortunately, not so. Because what happens is, if you show uncensored, these platforms are not built for news. Please understand, social media platforms are not built for news. They are built for entertainment. We just happen to be on the platform, they tolerate us. Let's be very honest about it. They're there to make their own money. And content like this is not good. Facebook has a, has a clear line. Any political content can be demonetized. Karlo? Yeah, now they've really started downgrading news. We told you Facebook that any political content is not monetizable. Where are you going to earn your money from? Okay. It's not only about monetizing it, they will just reduce the reach. Correct. Exactly, the reach goes yeah. down. So now, what happens is, when they reduce the reach of one video or two videos, your overall channel health starts deteriorating. Yeah. Because then the platform thinks that this is not a dhanda channel for me. Why do I show it to other people? So that's a real problem that we face. On that way, some people like Abhinandan thought, Achha, chalo, pub, wo, hum, wo karte hai. let's do a subscription model. I also got inspired when I said, I also Patreon. Shuru karta now, in Jammu and Kashmir, mm -hmm. news is coming in that the government has a problem with subscription models. It is anti-national. It could spread anti-national sentiments. No, it's, a, it's a terror funding model, in it's fact. Ter yeah. Terror funding model. <laughs> your, 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 your takedown is not the least of your problems. UAPA is... is yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean one, one, one sees these things coming in. So it is that multifaceted. So in fact, uh, thank you, Akash. That was, um, I think it's important that that aspect, the technical aspect also, you know, regular folk get to know. Yeah. But I want to come to the uh, IPR laws versus the law of the land versus how these uh, transnational corporations decide what is to be taken down. Incidentally, uh, YouTube has reinstated all our uh, videos, bar seven of them. And when he said why, they sent us this long, complicated email because we won the case in the Delhi High Court. So I was like, is your team higher than the Delhi High Court? Because when convenient, they said we'll follow the law of the land if the government says take this down. Now that the law of the land has said that we are not in violation, then everything should be reinstated, but it is not. We are still in that conversation. So, you know, it, it is this very vague space which hopefully will get uh, uh, firmed as we go on. But just on, on what Akash said, on the subscription model, we uh, recently had an event in the South, uh, in Kerala, uh, which was uh, in partnership with the News Minute, uh, which is also a fantastic news platform, and Josie Joseph's Conference Media. Josie Joseph is one of India's best known and uh, most brilliant investigative journalists. 
Uh, the state doesn't only operate through ED and IT. There are some very, uh, you know, there's some channels and news platforms that are very sympathetic to the state and they will push that line. Like I have been called on a, uh, a leading English news channel by your former boss that are they getting the instruction from ISI? Like, okay. But some people actually called up a concern. They said, because once this narrative starts on air, then they, let's say they make thousand people believe it, then they will come for you saying he is from ISI. So the local uh, one, Looney, Banjan, uh, Kerala, that also run news platforms, said because that uh, program was supported by the Canadian High Commission, said that this is a Khalistani platform, money from Khalistan, the Khalistani supporters from Canada, are giving money to the Canadian government, who is giving it to us to secede south from the rest of India. I was like, what? In, all, in the serious, this is not satire, this is a serious article, which then is picked up by other sites. I was like, so some Khalistani sitting in Canada, tell the Canadian government, here, take money, give it to that guy, because of course, why should they give it to me directly? So that Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra, Telangana secede. Like, which Khalistani is doing? Like, but it goes as news. Aapko, that wasn't taken down. Your power, a, imagine your power. It, 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 it has not been taken down. You see, a, a lot of such nonsense is run, but depending on whose side it kind of takes, it is not taken down. So, uh, Shah Rukh, can you just give me an idea of IPR laws, right? Which are fuzzy right now as to what is fair use. Fair use is, for example, um, and this, this has been educated in court and, and settled when it comes to books. You know, a book excerpt was carried, and I think a publisher said that they are, you know, pirate, it's, it's piracy. They said, no, they are commenting on your book. They've taken a paragraph from a book. They are not carrying the whole book, and that's fair commentary. Now, the same logic does not necessarily extrapolate to television because it hasn't happened before. So we have, we're in court on, on issues like that. So that's considered fair use. And I'm not just chapoing the whole show. Uh, so now fair use versus transnational platforms. When they say these are our rules, and what is fair use? Because in, a, in an American channel, it goes. But in India, they restrict. When can we expect a very clear cut law that this is what it is? So that it is not ad hoc. When they want to pull us down, they pull us down. When they say they won't. Uh, and what will it take to have that clear cut law? And so that YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter also comply. It's pending before the Supreme Court, is it not? Together with, with electoral bonds in 370. This, this particular, oh, is it? Okay. This particular, the Delhi High Court decided it one way. And it said that the broadcast reproduction rights that, that apply to broadcast corporations do not apply to, to the internet, to platforms. But it's now pending before the Supreme Court. So you just have to wait for it. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll elaborate on it. I also sent you an email this morning telling you that I know nothing about IPR. I don't think you saw that. No, I think yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, no, but, but I'll think and give you an answer. But in the meanwhile, uh, I had a suggestion for you. Uh, first of all, my clients tell me that bathroom is a lot problem in jail. Mein. Uh, garmi not so much. But... Um, and, and this is also satire, I don't take this seriously, but I was, I was thinking that perhaps you should think about filing an intervention petition in the bail hearing that is currently being heard by the Supreme Court in Pavan Khera's case. Because the whole argument there that the state is making is that this kind of speech that Pavan Khera used for Mr. Modi is not innocuous. You, you can't go into people's parentage and you can't abuse these, you know, these very uh, you can't use gendered language. And he says that he needs custodial interrogation of Pavan Khera to find out if whether there is a conspiracy, whether he said it on his, of his own accord, or whether he was funded by foreign powers, or some powers, to actually say it. I have a feeling if you file an intervention for this particular comment, you might get somewhere. <laughs> so it's not... It's not a joke. The secession yeah. is not a joke. Remember, this is the same nation in the middle of COVID. For four months, we were obsessing about SSR and getting him justice. And now when the case is with the PMO and the CBI reporting to the PMO, nobody's asking any questions at this point of time is why the CBI is very quiet about the matter. So unfortunately, all this 
uh, name calling, all this suggestive language actually plays a very important role. We might think it is laughable, but apparently the masses That's, don't. It, it, it sets a narrative. You're absolutely right. But, you know, uh, Sharuk, coming to freedom of speech, you know, I mean, IPR, of course, is a little more uh, technical, complicated no, in the sense I'm still thinking of, about uh, it. I'll give you an answer yeah. before we close. No, but, you know, uh, I remember when 66A came about, which was struck down by the Supreme Court, Section 66A of the IT Act, which uh, gave the state the power to arrest. And many people were arrested for a cartoon, you know, that if you put anything, and I, I will never forget this rule. We ran a campaign called Internet in Kalab. Uh, which, you know, to, to say that th this is ridiculous. One word that is usual is that if anything causes annoyance to someone, uh, then also it is subject to be taken down and you can be arrested. I was like, dude, half these politicians' face causes me annoyance. So can I say, don't show me your face? Like, what does it even mean, cause annoyance? Now, right now in the freedom of speech, the way it is, and the reasonable restrictions, are there still many words that are so vague and subjective that they can be interpreted any way by the state uh, should they choose to? Or has that become a little more specific? National security is one such word. It, it could mean anything. Uh, public order or law and order even could mean anything. Uh, a lot of times they don't want to even talk about what is the actual threat to national security because we, we can't. We can't tell you. All these people who, who, who've been detained under UAPA, and as a rule, when the 90 days are over, the, the, the NIA asks for extra time. They want 90 more days, and they are given it. So we have people detained without charge for up to 180 days. In the meanwhile, you, you can't even know what, what investigations are going on because national security, because there is a threat to public order. So it's like a cannon that cannot be touched. Uh, it, it could contain anything. But I also want to offer another provocation, which is that on the one hand, we have this very low threshold of national security or public, public disorder when they want to take stuff down, when they want to arrest people. But on the other hand, how do we deal with the problem of hate speech? Uh, what kind of threshold are we looking at? Because hate speech is not episodic like the narrative you're talking about, it's, it's cumulative. It'll grow on its own, right? So I remember times when, uh, before 2014, when we still had prejudicial speech, when people would still say, ke, aap log, uh, partition ho gaya, yahi hai. <laughs> and now it's, it's, it's accumulating. It's accumulated to something much more direct. So when you're talking about systemic, cumulative hate speech, how do you come to a legal threshold? You can't criminalize all of it. Mm -hmm. How do we imagine that kind of speech, which, which the law courts are now having trouble regulating? They, they don't know how to deal with it. One problem, of course, is, speech, uh, of, uh, is scale. But the other problem is the nature of hate speech, that it's a narrative, it's a discourse. How do you stop that kind of speech? In fact, the digital age has made me rethink many things. I was a free speech absolutist. Uh, and absolutist also, I mean, even the country that is held up as the beacon of uh, the First Amendment, America, even there, it's not absolute in the absolute sense. There is, for example, Mr. Trump's tweets on election analysis were taken down. Or you can't say, bow, bomb a fire in a room full, that's not free speech. But now it's not just a question of a full room. It is a question of what I say on social media, which can have cascading and snowballing effect. So I have actually thought my position on on you know, how hateful something maybe it should be allowed. But uh, when there are real life consequences, like we have seen, we saw in Delhi, uh, and the absolute failure of the Broadcasters Association in controlling the channels, um, you know, I've rethought that position. Uh, we will be taking questions in another, you know, seven to eight minutes. But before I do... Um, can I, can I, may I add to that very quickly? I'm, I'm again reminded of the, the last hearing in the hate speech case in the Supreme Court, where the state came before the court and insisted on playing three videos, three video recordings, which were not part of their pleadings. And the first recording was a DMK leader quoting Perrier. And it was an offensive speech. It was a militant speech. It called for the overthrow of Brahmins. The second was largely audible, inaudible, but he claimed that it was a, a, a Muslim imam talking about the supremacy of Islam, which was also very offensive. And the third one was, a, was some dissenter abusing the prime minister. 
And the state said to the court that if you are going to, to, to sanction anti-Muslim speech, then you must do something about these speeches. And the court adjourned. And my third provocation now to you is that these are episodic speeches. They are offensive. They're even militant. But they are not hate speeches because they are not systemic, because they will not cause material harm or a democratic deficit, because they, they're, they're socially and politically not in a position to do so. They're coming from the margins. It might change at some point, not at this stage. So they can be prosecuted under 153A or whatever it is, but they, they're not in the category of hate speech. Hate speech is something that has to be dealt with differently. Hate speech is, is probably a constitutional tort, but we need to reimagine hate speech and we need to think about new thresholds. Hate speech is, is a majoritarian problem that can only be directed at minorities, not the, the other, other way around. Correct. So it's it's not a equal to A equal B at B it because they not. absolutely. And it I think not. that is what is not understood, let alone by population in general, even by media professionals. But you know, uh, speaking of being provocative, I remember when the Charlie Hebdo episode happened uh, and uh, the entire, almost the entire team of that uh, magazine was killed. And I think many of their... Uh, cartoons were in very poor taste, but at that time the question was freedom of speech, not taste. And that I, I don't like it when that kind of when we're talking about someone being killed for something, and then the conversation becomes about was it in good taste. I think that is that's a terrible. Absolutely. And and yeah. you know, since you mentioned that the state said that a criticism of Mr. Modi is the same as criticism of Islam or Hinduism, uh, it's it's become a religion. And I had uh, spoken to an artist, and I said we'll do a magazine, we'll do a comic book where we start off with the prophet as an invisible. There's just be, you know, like in a comic book, there's just a thought, there's this speech bubble, but there's no one there. By the end of the comic book, we will give him form. Let us provoke that we can do this. And the other way around, we'll start off Mr. Modi with full. By the end of it, he will just be a white dari. You cannot name him, cannot. <laughs> Let's do that. He said, sir, aap karo mera naam mat lagana. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and this is about, seven, when did Ebdo happen? About six, seven years? Seven. Now, you know, at that time I was seriously considering, let's do this, let's see what happens. Now I know what's going to happen, so I'm not sure I'll do it. Uh, but the point is, that is an idea that I had said, okay, let's provoke both sides. Let's see, does the Charlie Hebdo type thing happen to us, or does a Bhakt type thing happen? So who goes for us first? Uh, but but all, are all sides equal? Is No, it's not. In the yeah. Indian context, which yeah. is now, it's, it's become so complicated. But at that time, you know, when the Ebdo episode happened, there were people, even in India, saying the right thing happened. And I think that also needed to be called out because while I understand that in India today, the context is very different. It is not A equals to B, B equals A. But at the same time, there has to be a calling out of people saying the right thing happened there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that must yeah. be called out. Yeah. And in fact, there was a Samajwadi party uh, minister who yes. kind of said supported that, it. Yeah, yeah. Supported it. Yeah. Uh, he was... Uh, and he played up to the stereotypes that channels like to put, you know, with the beard and the thing and so, okay, now. Oh, and there's another, there's another pattern to it. Even if he's not wanting to react, these news agencies would definitely just go to that particular person because they know that he's going to say something which is going to create that furor, you know. So this is how also, you know, all these hate speeches develop, this communalism spreads just because they try to get hold of such people who will speak such foul language or whatever they will be against those people. So I think there's a pattern to it. Yeah, absolutely. They have to put all the loonies together. Uh, and, and that's not a problem, not just in India. He is sitting in his house on his sofa. You just you just go there with what your do you own mic. Huh, what do you think of this? What is your reaction to it? And then obviously he will say something absurd because they know this is the person who is going to say something which, is, which they will have a good, you know, TRP material for. Uh, in fact, uh, and this, you know, problem exists in even in Western media. I was listening to a podcast today where there was a, a Republican governor. I forget what state he was from. And it's, it's with N-U, N-U is his name. It has a Nunu in it. I, I don't know what the full name is. And he was saying, I'm, I'm a sensible Republican. I'm not a Trumper. And I think Trump does, should not be president. But he says, uh, this is on uh, Bill Maher's show. He says, but I will never be on a CNN or a Fox. Because they will want the ones who say... Every Democrat is Antifa and, you know, Black Lives Matter terrorists. And they want Republicans who will say that all these, uh, you know, Democrats, they're all, you know, far left. They want to take us back to communism, etc. Mm. You will not have any of the moderates from either side. And that becomes a narrative. But uh, Akash, you know, I, I like that you introduced that bit about 
what is the mechanism this this three tier basically anyone who runs a youtube channel or a website etc according to the new it rules or the amendments to the it rules we have to have a three tier uh, system of redressal so if any of you have a problem with what we've written or shown you complain to a committee that we have to have committees within our organizations that look at it if you're not satisfied with how we've dealt with it you can escalate it to digipub which is the largest organization of uh, digital media in the country digital news media in the country that has its own committee and if you're not satisfied with them then you take it up to a committee that is sitting in the government in the ministry now um, like you said we have to deal with these kind of complaints what i really want to know is there are hundreds of thousands of digital youtube channels websites like us they have one committee there if one day 7000 complaints go up there how do we even going to address it so i think there is a chronology to it it will be a systematic thing uh, one channel would be flooded with uh, uh, 100 500 1000 complaints and then you try answering everything within 24 hours uh, just wanted to ensure everybody i mean whenever we do an uh, an episode you know the thing they but but it happened legally i said of course nobody is debating whatever is happening is not happening legally everything is happening within the legal framework it's just like in china one party system is absolutely legal you can't say that uh, xi is a dictator he's he's elected so you can't say he's a dictator so everything happens legally i just want to buttress this point about not only us but the audience here we were talking about public order i don't want to scare you but we, since we are all doing provocative statements i I mean, all of you could have face an FIR right now that this is a threat to public order. What are we discussing? Why are we discussing all of this? Seventy people marching in Bangalore against a flyover without any violence, peacefully have an FIR against them. Poster phanne par FIR. Trend lagane par FIR. Lagane par FIR. What are we talking about? That's where we are at this point of time. So I want you guys to be absolutely clear where we are headed in that legal framework. While journalists will face that legal, why isn't that you know digital didn't face the fire earlier? Because a legal system is being brought into place. Not that अच्छा okay, इसको इधर उधर से harass करेंगे. Legally करेंगे ना जो करना है. तो उसको लीगली इस तरीके से किया जाएगा वाइल ऑन टेलीविजन एंड दैट्स परहैप्स वन ऑफ द अदर फ्रस्ट्रेशंस एंड दे विल कॉल यू एंटी इंडिया एंटी इंडिया चैनल बट व्हाट इज व्हाटएवर इज हैपनिंग ऑन टेलीविजन इज हैपनिंग एंड आई एम सॉरी टू से इट्स नॉट लाइक नोबडी इज वाचिंग टंस एंड टंस ऑफ पीपल आर स्टिल वाचिंग वी नो इट्स क्रैश वी नो इट्स क्रैप वी नो इट इज नॉट टॉकिंग एनीथिंग अबाउट द इश्यूज दैट शुड बी टॉक्ड अबाउट बट बॉस people are watching and it's not even necessarily factual so i'll open this uh, to the audience so let's start with that young man there this closer hi. to your mouth please yeah hi everyone my name is sean uh, i'm a postgraduate student from soas university of london uh my question is that i re- i recently developed a paper where i'm discussing strategies about you know how can we combat the rising arrests of journalists in the country and one of them was you know trying to develop work with the delhi government into developing policies that could help you know that they could pass laws in the delhi government in the delhi assembly to you know protect journalists do you think such a policy such policies passing such policies in the delhi legislative assembly can pass can work in combating the legal threats we face as journalists uh well thank you that's a that's very interesting thought uh i think it maybe if we started in another state it could बट टू कोर्ट द चीफ मिनिस्टर अजी मैं तो अपना पी एन बी ने अपॉइंट कर सकता हूँ एल जी साहब बैठा ना मैं क्या करूँगा बट आई एक्चुअली डू थिंक दैट एंड एंड वी हैव आई हैव डिस्कस द फ्यू कॉलीग्स ऑफ माइंड दैट इफ यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई अ स्टेट दैट इज स्लाइटली मोर टॉलरेंट आई विल नॉट से फ्रेंडली टू फ्री स्पीच एंड बिकॉज नो बडी इज इट्स जस्ट कल्चरली लाइक शाहरुख सेट कल्चरली इट्स नॉट पार्ट ऑफ अस मे बी दैट्स अ स्टार्ट But that's actually a very good thought, and it's something that you know we should all think about a little bit. Chhattisgarh has actually just notified exactly such an act, but it's been notified, I think, a week ago. We don't know how it will work out, and Chhattisgarh is not particularly yes, a friendly to friendly to, to yeah. But but this this uh, you might want to look at this act. It's it's very recently been notified. This is something close to my heart, so I'll just say this. I have been asking uh, the news organization bodies also. I do not think that there is a political solution to this or any state doing any legislation. 
because trust me uh, because i talk to journalists across states also go and find out what is happening to journalists in rajasthan for example so there is no model state of journalism in this country uh, look at kerala also look at west bengal also and of course all the other bjp states also wherever you have a politician in power they will try to squeeze you one way or the other some might just give you money and be nice to you others might be brutal the answer actually is if free thinking people progressive people global thinking indians can get together and have a battery of lawyers who will say enough is enough let us at least ensure the brazen cases where the state has exceeded its powers we will fight these cases and make an example because what is the case what is the state doing it's basically doing a chilling effect isko pakad lo jisse 10 log aur dar jaye isko pakad lo jisse 15 log aur dar jaye the idea is to do a counter legal uh, uh, action to it and i all and again the problem is that how many courts will be proactive it looks as if the supreme court at this point of time is taking an interest in saving democracy in this country so hopefully a powerful group of lawyers may want to do something that you have suggested <coughs> right um okay there's a young man here sir mera sawal akash singh ji aap se hai ki aapne pehle hi session mein ye kaha ki social media jo hai wo mainstream media ke parallel mein aake khada nahi ho sakta kyunki wo ek entertainment ka source hai सर एक बुक है लिमका बुक ऑफ जर्नलिज्म उसके पहले ही पन्ने पे ये लिखा हुआ होता है कि सोशल मीडिया की जो पत्रकारिता होती है वो एक कॉन्केव मिरर की तरह होती है आप उसके जितने पास चले जाएं वो अब भी उतने ही दूर रहते हैं जब तक कि आप उसे पार ना कर लें तो आप हमें बता दीजिए कि वो परत कौन सा है कि सोशल मीडिया उस परत को पार करके मैन मीडिया के अल्टरनेटिव फॉर्म में आके खड़ी हो जाए मैं मानता हूं कि ये जो डिजिटल बिल जो इंट्रोड्यूस किया है सरकार ने जिसको लाने की कोशिश हो रही है अभी अभी थोड़ा सा उसमें अभी कोर्ट ने थोड़ा सा थैंकफुली दखल की है ये मैं एक मानता हूं एक कॉम्प्लीमेंट है क्योंकि मैं जानता हूं चार साल साढ़े चार साल पहले जब चैनल हमने शुरू किया था किसी को घंटा फर्क नहीं पड़ता आकाश बनर्जी तुम देशभक्त बन जाओ या कोई और चैनल बन जाओ कभी कोई प्रेशर नहीं आया है कभी कोई मैसेज नहीं आया है ये पिछले एक दो साल में आना शुरू हुआ है कोई पुराना मंत्री फोन करेगा जो कभी मुझे मीडिया डेज से जानता था कि यार क्या कर रहे हो मेरी ऐसी ऐसी बातें हो चुकी है नहीं नहीं तुम हमारा क्यों कांग्रेस का भी करो ऐसे सर मरे को क्या मारना सर नहीं 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 तब भी कुछ तो करो तो फिर ऐसी बातें होती है अच्छा सर कितना करे नहीं उनका फिफ्टी फिफ्टी मैंने कहा नहीं सर फिफ्टी फिफ्टी नहीं थर्टी फोर थर्टी सेवेंटी करे तो मैं खुद ही सोच रहा हूँ ये बातें क्या हो रही है कि मैं किस पार्टी को कितना क्रिटिसाइज करूं उनका प्रॉब्लम ये था कि सबको करो तो ठीक है हमें क्यों मैंने खैर ये अलग डिबेट हो जाता है कि जो पावर में होता है उसकी ज्यादा क्रिटिसिजम होनी चाहिए बट उसको छोड़ देते हैं मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया अभी भी बहुत ज्यादा शक्तिशाली है क्योंकि आपको सिर्फ टीवी का बटन ऑन करना होता है और आपको वो चैनल दिख जाता है सोशल मीडिया अभी भी आपको जाकर एक्सेस करके यूट्यूब चैनल जाकर उसको प्ले करना होता है जो डिसर्निंग ऑडियंस है सिर्फ वो देख रहा है प्लस हमारे पास वो रिसोर्सेज नहीं है जो रिसोर्सेज इनके पास थी जब वो रिपोर्टर जाकर खड़ा कर सकती थी अपने शो के लिए अब उनको खुद ही जाकर बोलना पड़ता है खुद ही एडिट करना पड़ता है वो फिनिश वो वो स्पीड बहुत मुश्किल है सोशल मीडिया में करना विदाउट पैसा लेकिन जैसे धीरे धीरे लोग देख रहे हैं अगर उनका विश्वास उठता है मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया से तो वो साक्षी को एक बागीचे में बैठ के बात करना देख लेंगे एक रवीश को एक पिक्चर के सामने बैठने के देख लेंगे मुझे किताबों के एक बुक स्टैंड के सामने मुझे देख लेंगे अगर ये चीज बढ़ती है तभी कोई पॉइंट है लेकिन सरकार जैसी देख रही है ये चीज एक्चुअली बढ़ रही है और साक्षी का भी काम चल जा रहा है मेरा भी चलो थोड़े मेंबर्स के साथ मैं गुजारा निकाल ले रहा हूं मैं एक छोटा सा टीम मैनेज कर सकता हूं बड़ा नहीं छोटा सा टीम मैनेज कर सकता हूं तभी यह बिल आ रहा है तो इसका मतलब है कि कहीं ना कहीं बराबरी हो रही है धीरे से लेकिन अगर आप नंबर देखो ना आंकड़े देखो अभी भी मेन मीडिया का बहुत नंबर है इंटरनेट पेनेट का भी बहुत फर्क पड़ेगा डेटा uh, uh, <coughs> अभी काफी चीप है इंडिया में लेकिन और वो uh, बढ़ रहा है डेटा बढ़ेगा और अभी जो एक वॉल्ड गार्डन कहते हैं जिससे जब आप अगर आप जियो का कनेक्शन खरीदें तो अगर वो बोलें कि भाई मुकेश भाई बोलेंगे कि बेटा तू भी क्या याद रखेगा नेटवर्क एटीन की ऐप फ्री है इसके साथ hmm. तो फिर आप न्यूज लॉन्ड्री क्यों डाउनलोड करोगे तो बहुत चीजें और um, अमेरिका में काफ़ी इंस्टीट्यूशन रोबस्ट हैं ताकि अनफेयर प्रैक्टिस ना हो यहाँ पर देखना पड़ेगा क्या होगा वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन दैट यंग बॉय दैन विल कम टू दिस यंग गर्ल हेयर हाई आई एम आरफ सो वी टेंड टू क्रिटिसाइज ट्रेडिशनल टेलीविजन मीडिया लॉट हम सब ने बोला दैट ट्रेडिशनल मीडिया हैज़ अ लॉट ऑफ रीच दैट एट द क्लिक ऑफ अ बटन आकाश दैट हिमसेल्फ यू कैन रीच मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल इन इंडिया then why do we keep criticizing them and not join them i mean we had ndtv which was an alternate to godi media but then there was the adani takeover 
why is it that we not have more moderate and more free television media why don't we see that as an option because when there is more television media because at the end of the day the number of people who are consuming digital media they are very less and at the end of the day hum sab echo chambers mein fas jayenge all of this will become an echo chamber where the same group of people who already have progressive ideas who already see what the bjp is doing or what the government in power is doing they'll keep on seeing the same thing and they'll keep on understanding but if we don't why don't we go to the traditional tv and do so this? there's uh, I'll, i'll take this question quickly and we'll just give the mic to this young girl here and then i'll come to you sir one sec just just i just committed to i just i'll just take a question uh, there are two reasons one is uh, broadcast uh, you require a license for uplinking downlinking and uh, there is no procedure uh, uh, of the license that it has to be granted in this much time and if it's not granted the reason has been given so there are there is actually uh, mr rakav behel uh, quint he had applied for a license for a channel which the license years passed it, it didn't come so a your license b once you're licensed by the government it's far easier for them to take you down in fact if you go to the inb uh, ministry website they have a page on which of the channels that are asked to black out or take down shows you know comedy central was asked to take down uh, was blacked out for like 11 days for a joke not once several times so that is why you can't do channels and two the economic model the revenue model it's a failing model the world over it's a long longer discussion but those are basically the reasons uh yeah go ahead and also I, I, when you're a small yeah. group you can take more risk uh, like i can take more risk that if tomorrow i'm shut down i'll say sorry to 50 people and say guys go home but you have to say sorry to 5000 people you think differently plus aap phir dobara usi trap mein phas jayenge na pehle aap license ke liye jab apply kar rahe to wo to sarkari degi aapko license uske baad unke paas aur zyada clutches hain jo wo karne ki koshish kar rahe hain abhi digital ke sath phir aap ads lene ki koshish karoge ads kin se loge wohi sare business houses hain kaun hai jo ki ads denge koi aur ad dega to sarkar usko dene hi nahi degi aur jab tak ki aap unke kehne ke hisab se kaam nahi karenge tab tak aapko koi ad nahi milega so aap basically phir wahi phas jayenge wohi ban jayenge jo chhod kar aa rahe hain yeah go ahead young lady i just want to add that the uplinking downlinking guidelines uh, have national security and also <laughs> national <laughs> unity as as a criteria सुदर्शन के पास है स्ट्रॉन्ग सेंटिमेंट सो दिस इज समथिंग विच इज वेरी क्लोज टू हार्ट बिकॉज आई स्पेंड टेन ईयर्स इन टेलीविजन आई क्विट इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेल्व वेन टू रेडियो सो मच बिफोर ऑल दिस मक एक्चुअली हैपन आई सॉ टेलीविजन डाइंग वाई इज बिकॉज ए देर इज नो प्रोग्रेशन इन टेलीविजन एज अ करियर जर्नलिस्ट द होल मीडिया इको सिस्टम जो स्टक वाई इतने चैनल हैं और ये ग्रो नहीं कर रहे हैं लोग उन्हें देख नहीं रहे हैं यू टॉक अबाउट एन डी टी वी एन डी टी वी टू का लोन इन वॉट एवर टू थाउजेंड सेवन एट वॉट एवर इट वॉज नॉट एबल टू रीपे द लोन द आंसर इज वेरी सिंपल इज दैट देवर नेवर एबल टू जनरेट इनफ मनी वी थिंक पीपल आर वेटिंग टू वॉच ग्रेट क्वालिटी कॉन्टेंट सॉरी टू से दे आर नॉट रवीश वॉज वन ऑफ द लोएस्ट रैंकिंग नाइन पी एम एंकर्स and are not being the highest 9 pm anchors so what does it say about the audience also so somewhere down the line while i have badgered mainstream media it hurts me because i was part of it that's what i always wanted to do since class 8 to see that come down to this what my former bosses and friends do i have lost friends because of this uh, it's sad but that is how it is and a lot of time people say that aap log saath mein kyun nahi aa jate ho साथ में आ जाएंगे तो फिर मारना और भी आसान होगा hmm. आज साक्षी को या फिर कल मेरा नंबर एटलीस्ट देर बी फ्यू पीपल स्टिल एग्जिस्टिंग या गो हेड गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्पीकर्स माय सेल्फ दिल नशी जहरा फर्जिंग बैचलर ऑफ जर्नलिज्म फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली एंड रिसेंटली आई वर्क विद एन टी वी इन टेक इन ब्रॉडकास्ट डिपार्टमेंट सो माई क्वेश्चन इज टू साक्षी मैम दैट इज वंस आई and discussed with my colleagues and my friends at the office so i want to become a news anchor as well speaking like i'm very passionate about it so uh, like uh, the friends were uh, suggesting that ki is zamane mein aaj tak ho ya any other godi media can say directly फ्रंट पेज नहीं आने देते हैं किसी भी नए चेहरे को आपको हायर करेंगे वो अपॉर्चुनिटी देंगे न्यू फ्रेशर्स बिकॉज दे रियली वांट द एनर्जेनेटिक फ्रेश पर्सनस बट वो आपको फ्रंट फेस नहीं बनने देंगे तो क्यों ना आप यूट्यूब और लाइक जो एज यू आर अ यूट्यूब जर्नलिस्ट सो यूट्यूब चैनल स्टार्ट करें बिकॉज सोशल मीडिया अब काफ़ी क्रेज में आ रहा है काफ़ी पावर में आ रहा है सो माई क्वेश्चन इज़ फॉर यू दैट कि आपके क्या चैलेंजेस और क्या आपके बेस्ट मेमोरी भी आई रियली वॉन्ट टू नो कि डू एंड डोंट्स अगर आप एज अ फ्रेशर मुझे 
आई वुड लाइक टू टेक योर सजेशन ऑन इट थैंक यू बहुत सिंपल सा है एक तो मेरे मेरे नज़र में एंकर कुछ नहीं होता है इट्स अ जर्नलिस्ट दैट यू शुड बिकम इफ यू आर अ गुड जर्नलिस्ट इफ़ यू आर एबल टू रिपोर्ट वेल यू नो कि न्यूज़ क्या है न्यूज़ की सेंस आपको है तो आप अपने आप एक अच्छे एंकर बन जाओगे एंकर बनने के लिए कुछ चेहरा वेहरा कोई नहीं चाहिए आपको ठीक है आपने बहुत से ऐसे चेहरे देखे होंगे जो बहुत ज़्यादा आपको बहुत लगेगा देखे कि बहुत सुंदर नहीं है पर दे आर गुड जर्नलिस्ट तो पहले तो जर्नलिस्ट बनने के बारे में सोचिए वो नहीं बनना है जो गोदी मीडिया हमको दिख रहा है अच्छी रिपोर्ट्स कीजिए अपने आप आपको सब देखेंगे और एंकर की लाइफ होती है अगर आपको एंकर बनना है एंकर मीन्स स्पेशली बींग अ फीमेल थोड़ा सा ये होता है कि जब तक आप अच्छा दिख भी रहे हो और सब कुछ बहुत बहुत फर्क पड़ता है ये इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया में ये प्रॉब्लम है आप रिपोर्टर रहेंगे आपकी लाइफ हमेशा रहेगी आपके बाल सफ़ेद हो जाएं आप मोटे हो जाएं आप कुछ हो जाएं कोई फ़र्क नहीं पड़ने वाला कितने रिंकल्स आ जाएं तो आप रिपोर्टर रहिए ज़िंदगी भर रहेंगे और एंकर वैंकर कुछ नहीं होता है सिर्फ ग्लैमर है देखने के लिए पढ़ तो उनको गालियाँ ही रही हैं कहीं पर भी जा रहे हैं तो कोई सुंदर बन के जा रहे हैं लेकिन लोग गोदी मीडिया गो बैक गोदी मीडिया गो बैक करके नारे लगा रहे सो दे नो पॉइंट राइट माई बेस्ट ग्रोथ ऑन द चैनल हैपन ड्यूरिंग कोविड एक तो बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड कोई स्टूडियो वूडियो नहीं है बेडरूम में बैठा हूं पीछे तौलिया सूख रहा है और ये शक्ल के साथ इट डज यू नो द बिगेस्ट लर्निंग हम लोग मेकअप पोत की स्टूडियो लाइट पचास साल हजार वॉट हमारे ऊपर और बैकग्राउंड क्रोमा डज इन मैटर इट टर्न आउट टू बी ऑन सोशल मीडिया इफ पीपल ट्रस्ट यू and your content और आपको घर की जो टी शर्ट पहनी हुई है उसी में मैंने वीडियोज पता रिकॉर्ड किए हैं एंड एक बार तो मैंने रिकॉर्ड कर लिया बिकॉज आई जनरली यूज माई गार्डन एक बार मैंने रिकॉर्ड करने के बाद देखा यार ये पीछे मग किसने रख दिया किसी ने हटाया क्यों नहीं अब कैसे उसको क्रॉप कर करके हटा रही मैं क्या छोड़ो यार जाने दो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डू इट अगेन व्हाट शी सेड यू मस्ट बी अ जर्नलिस्ट एंड आई विल जस्ट सिट सिट यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड व्हेन वी आर एड्रेसिंग यू यू नो वन थिंग आई मस्ट से एंड आई एम टोल्ड ऑफन दैट आई साउंड लाइक एन अंकल दैट गाइस द जनरेशन द ज़ूमर्स यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हेन यू गेट अ जॉब एनीवेयर it is not given cause you're brilliant you cannot offer any perspective insight that to a 50 year old person who's been working for 30 years so many comments i want to write an opinion piece i want to be an anchor beta you are not you don't have anything to offer it's very rude only thing you have to offer is hard work and diligence you your opinion is worth zero to me but we have so many people who come to news laundry and they want to write opinion pieces as you do 50 reports then write a first opinion piece when i joined aaj tak for the first two months i was transcribing tapes which means i was seeing interviews and just writing them down out of which a little bit would be used and arsak was a bulletin then and speaking of anchors i remember uh, uh, by by boss at that time told me now the beards are very fashionable at that time they weren't so when i at piece to cameras weren't piece to cameras when you do piece to camera arsak was on channel then it was a bulletin it was a nightly bulletin and when i did a piece to camera i was told by my boss पूरी साहब पूछ रहे थे इसके मूछे ऊपर को क्यों है ये गोगिया पाशा लगता है रिपोर्टर थोड़ा लगता है या गो हेड सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर माय नेम इज शौर्य सो आई एम फ्रॉम सिटी सिटी इज जेन्यू सर माय क्वेश्चन इज मेरा क्वेश्चन आपसे ये है कि सर जैसे अल्टरनेट मीडिया लाइक यू सर प्लीज स्पीक फॉर ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ वनरेबल सेक्शन सर बट पर्सन विद डिसेबिलिटी आर वेरी इग्नोर्ड बाय द मीडिया आल्सो and uh, by alternate me- me- media uh, media also so sir uh, do you think that the alternate media also privileges a certain kind of mi- minority sec- section section over the other voice of certain section uh, matter more than others because hum log to kahi invisible ho ke bhi invisible hi rehte hain yes a very good Apologies question and for that yeah. i mean uh, you know i let them take it but guilty as charged i think uh, you know differently able people are a minority that do not get the attention that a political issue gets because it's not a political issue uh, although i i will say and you know at the risk of uh, touting our own trumpet i think chitranshu uh, we are making a app uh, uh, visually impaired friendly uh, by the end of the year you will see the news laundry app can be used by people who can't see uh, we are making but but yes those are issues that don't come up and i really don't have uh an explanation or justification all i can say is that i know why because it's not a political issue it's not politically polarizing uh other than that i i don't know with anyone like to no, have um, a guess no 
आई एम रियली ग्लैड दैट यू ब्रॉड दिस अप और आज आपने जो बात बोली है आई एम श्योर इसके बाद वट एवर वीडियोज आई एम गोइंट टू मेक वट एवर वर्क आई एम गोइंट टू डू यू विल ऑलवेज बी इन माई माइंड एंड वट एवर आई कैन डू आई विल डू इट एंड आई विल कीप दिस इन माइंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ब्रिंगिंग दिस टू मी बिकॉज हमने शायद नहीं सोचा बट येस दिस परस्पेक्टिव नेवर केम अप टू अस आई एम रियली सॉरी एंड अपॉलोजीज फॉर दैट and i i just want to add that this this whole idea of a marketplace of ideas which is apparently free and fair is not so at all the marketplace of ideas is very layered very hierarchical either through social hierarchies or through whatever sells it's either hierarchy or capital and i see now from what you're saying that there are always people on the margins who were always left out from the marketplace of ideas also and i think a good way to start is that after this i'm just going to take this question on uh, my phone and i shall tweet it out and i would urge everybody to just tweet out that question let let tag tag your journalist tag that why is this so i'll come to you and do it i'm really sorry I'll, that i'll just add one point because this question has been asked of me by others and i'll give you the example of this whole debate that took place as far as representation of minorities in the newsroom and today i'm very proud to see the dalit dastaks of the world ambedkar caravan of the world aapko mainstream media mein jagah nahi mili aapne kaha screw mainstream media maine apni jagah khud social media mein banayi hai internet pe banayi hai mere khayal se hamari wo ability hogi nahi क्योंकि यहां तो डेली सर्वाइवल आई एम नॉट टू गिव यू फॉल्स होप यहां तो डेली सर्वाइवल की लगी पड़ी हुई है वॉट आई थिंक इज गोइंग टू हैपन इज मे बी यू और मे बी योर फ्रेंड इज गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ चैनल दैट इज गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन दिस इशू एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ डिपेंडिंग ऑन अस वॉट actually social media and that's i think the best thing that has happened out of social media is people who have been underrepresented people who have been ignored they have been able to create their own ecosystem they have been able to create their own little universe satire ke liye main mainstream media mein mujhe dur se bhaga diya jata maine koshish kiya tha hafte mein ek show karne do दूर से भगा दिया गया मजाक उड़ाओगे पॉलिटिशियंस का चैनल बंद करवाना है क्या सो इन अ वे आई वाज आल्सो वेरी आउटकास्ट and maine apna yes for channel create kiya i hope that one day you maybe get get along with your friends and create a channel so before i thank the panel and i allow them to introduce the next uh, panel uh, i have a few things that i just want to point out one is do support sakshi joshi's youtube channel um desh bhakt internet freedom foundation and news laundry and me i uh, you also have this thing mere paas case leke aaye log case leke aaye ha get get into trouble and get us a case lana ke liye case hona padega case na ho kisi pe aapke paas nahi aana chahiye kisi ko court ne kaha hai ki ab association is also a problem yes. this is for the audience and and, and and one more thing is you go to digipub.in digipub is a Uh, an association of digital platforms like akash like sakshi news laundry we all the media platforms which i think you will consider credible are a part of this we actually have a very generous lineup of lawyers who have said that if any of your members have a problem we will take care of it pro bono one of the reasons that i can you know take a panga with mr puri with arna with the times i have a case against each of them have filed against me the income tax department has filed against me because some my closest friends are lawyers if i had to pay them i would have shut down news laundry by by now yeah. the fact is that i have the finest lawyers who say we will appear for you we will not charge you so if that can be extended to others you can support digipub because those lawyers will give pro bono work but if we have a big corpus then anyone in that digipub ecosystem has a problem yeah, exactly. we say we have this battery of lawyers come we'll take you on so that is something that you will support i do not want to go to adani ji for an ad i don't want to go to uh, mukesh bhai for an ad last night he had a line up in his new uh, neeta mukesh ambani cultural center that you may have seen it is up to you guys to make democracy work don't expect democracy anywhere to be supported by the largest people who are benefiting from the system it is exactly. not going to happen so do go there's a um, qr code outside you can contribute from news laundry and internet freedom foundation from there uh, and of course they have their channels and sharuk has uh, her practice when you get into trouble make sure you pay her okay and if any of your law students or in law firms tell the guys boss bahut note chhap liye thoda punni bhi kama lo theek hai 
on that note uh, thank you all uh, uh, we will introduce the next panel